It's exactly eight after the hour six on the Mighty Metro FM. Welcome to it. I am Andy Ling. We'll be this is Sports that Amplified with Andy Ling. Thank you to Touch and the crew. They do it again tomorrow between three and six. Do catch them. It's uh, Pretty P who produces that show. you got Super Dave who's also on that show. Of course, you've got Touch. You've got uh, Malindi as well as uh, Muramutupi there. Make sure you do catch them tomorrow. Again, what you've just heard now in the kickoff was our conversation yesterday with Abdul Ibrahim who is the head of uh, referees at the South African Football Association, speaking to us about the concern that many of us have, rightfully so, for the decisions that uh, you know, have cost teams like Sikukun, have cost teams like Kaiser Chiefs, have cost teams uh, so much this season already. So much this season already. And that's what that was about. But nonetheless, we move on. We've had that conversation. We've said to them, guys, it's early in the season. We're not going to come out guns blazing fighting right now. We just need answers. You know, we're told about the suspension, which is not called the suspension anymore. It's called the rehabilitation. For 16 weeks, somebody's got to go and get rehabilitated and uh, hopefully come back better. We'll wait and see. It's exactly 10 after the hour 6. The show was fully planned. Uh, I said to touch a little bit earlier that, hey, the show was fully planned. You know, Bruce Davidson was going to come speak to us about uh, all things tennis. Novak Djokovic um, needed five match points and nearly four hours to pull off a, a gritty victory over Carlos Alcaraz. And those two have become the new uh, rivalry in tennis, haven't they? Uh, the toughest I've ever played, he said after that. I mean, this is a man that's played who we reckon are some of the goats. When we say the three goats and we count him, uh, it's crazy that he'd say this about Alcaraz, but... We'll have a word with Bruce Davidson about that there. And then as we're planning, you know Pro Pilani, he's on the show every single Friday with the Podcast Friday, guys. He broke a story that we thought we had to take. And Pro Pilani is one of us here. So when he brings us something, we have to, you know, look into it. And it was one that concerned so many of us. I think when we speak about why aren't salaries made public, football player salaries in South Africa, and we all say, no, it must be because we know how much Messi earns. We know how much everybody in the USA, in that league, in the Arabian leagues, in the European leagues, we know how much they earn. It's just a South African thing. Well, we all spoke about the salaries and the amount of money that Banyana Banyana are going to be getting paid, right? Yeah, on this radio, even I insisted. I said, no, what is that money? Because we need to know how much they're getting paid. FIFA published some of the money that they're getting. Well, the latest out of that is now they've been... They've become targets for scammers. They've become targets for criminals wanting to steal money, wanting to take money from these players. And one, unfortunately, has fallen prey to this and lost money. They're using the name of Jasmine. Jasmine, of course, as we know, is a football agent, but a lot more than that, a businessman as well. They're using his name to scam. So Pro's going to be on the line telling us a story. Then we'll get Jasmine on the line as well. Let's take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll get on that story. It's one that's caught me offside. And, you know, I have a passion for things like this. And I don't take it lying down because it's rubbish. It's exactly 13 after the hour 6. Welcome to it. It's Sports that Amplified with Andy. This is the biggest platform for all things sport anyway in South Africa. I'm not saying so. The numbers do. Because so many of you tune in every day and we appreciate it. On the line right now, I've got uh, one of our very own here, Pro Pilani. Um, he is uh, the football mayor of uh, KZN alongside with a man I call Mr. Jazz. Jasmine uh, is also with us, Jasmine Matlakani, who is a football agent, a businessman, an advisor in the business, in the football space and in the sports space and so much more. But let me perhaps, uh, uh, Mr. Jasmine, if you don't mind, maybe perhaps let me, let, let me go to Pro first. For him to lay the story because i mean that's who we all saw breaking the story on social media and then take it from there uh if you don't mind jazz i know i know i know, I know, I know you've got to be doing this across the stations but i think it's good that you know we we find out exactly what it is that's transpired first pro good evening with andile good evening uh to Pajaz, and good evening to the listeners of this number one for showing sort of hi, 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 pro. Pro, what's Thank happened? You. I mean, I saw your tweets and uh, we obviously had a conversation after that, but what's happened? Banyana Banyana, we all know exactly what's going on with them and money, but what exactly has happened? And, and, and I hear you've spoken to the action. We're going to keep her name um, anonymous because uh, she fears as well that she'll be victimized even further if we speak about her, who she is. Well, uh, I, I got a phone call from uh, from Jessica Ngomo. Everybody, I think, um, knows Jessica Ngomo. Um, she's a football agent, for especially uh, in ladies' football. Got a call from her, and um, she asked me for, for Prajay's number. 
And I was like, okay, because usually people will, um, especially in the media space, we will work with people that uh, uh, we work with agents. They will always ask for numbers and they will always ask for communication. So um, I forwarded it to her number. Uh, after a few minutes, she called me again and she said, no, listen, uh, this is what has happened. Uh, I want you to know that uh, a, a certain player was scammed. And uh, she has already sent money. This person said uh, he was a uh, Jasmine Matakane, and uh, he wants to help her get a sponsorship somewhere, and uh, he needs money. I don't know. But uh, she explained a lot of things, and I said no. But uh, as far as I understand, that won't be how projects work, because uh, I, I know he's a respectable agent. And uh, I asked myself, why would he be interested in women's football? Because I know he's normally in the men's football. And uh, she said, yeah, this is what has happened. And um, an hour or two later, there was another um, screenshot where this person was pretending to be Robert Marawa now. Um, Robert Marawa speaking to another player, uh, asking her for an interview and asking for other people's numbers. Uh, and then there was another screenshot as well. This, this person was pretending to be talking with the, the chairman of Mamelo de Sundown. So this person uh, is, uh, has been using, you know, you know, you know how you and I put Angela. We we normally test each other in the language that we use. This person will know exactly how this particular person uses the type of language that he uses, the formality or the casual language that they use, and they will use exactly that so that um, whoever that uh, he is scamming or she is scamming does not suspect that they are not really that person. And do we know how much was scammed from her? Um, at the moment, unfortunately, um, the amount was not disclosed. But uh, what we know that is that the player realized later that um, they were actually scammed because when they tried to contact this person back again uh, to try and find out more from him or her, uh, he was no longer picking up the calls and uh, it became difficult to, to even track him because... Uh, uh, he was no longer taking any calls and the phone uh, was eventually switched off. Prajas, uh, I'm going to bring you on here because uh, I don't even need to ask you if this is you or not you. I know it's not, <laughs> but it's your name that's being used here. And uh, I can imagine so many of, of, of the team that went to Banyana Banyana are getting similar things such as, as you heard, other broadcasters as well, like Rob, being used here. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Andile. I must also thank you and your team. And I, I must also send my gratitude to Uber for teaching about the story. Before I even say anything, um, Andile, exactly on the 31st of May, if you go to Mazola Mulefe's tweet, um, I asked him specifically to tweet about this before the season started. And I mean, if, I'm sure because he works with you guys in the same space, you can almost just go to his tweet feed and just check exactly on 31st of May, 2023. Mm. She tweeted about exactly this. So, yeah, the, the story is exactly that, that these scammers have been calling players, coaches, sometimes masseuse of the clubs, training fitness trainers, and they say they are me, and then they can move them from one club to another. And, I mean, I can tell you stories and stories of people that are at the airport waiting for this jazzman. And, and by the way, after only after the, everybody's been scammed, once they've paid they then look for the real me, which mm. is quite scary. It, 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 I, I don't even know where to start because uh, whoever that person is will call Andile and become pre, uh, present to be me. And then they'll have the conversation uh, however long they go. Once the money's been paid and they can't get out of that person, then they start asking people around for my number, which I... To, to radios and newspapers and people that are on social media to help me. I said, if anybody wants to help you in my name, at least the thing you must not do is to pay. Do everything else but paying the money. And I think that's the only best way for I hope that this scammers will get tired and, and stop. And, and I must also tell you, Angela, that this, this story started as far as 2010 World Cup. I've been dealing with this thing that, that long. It goes quiet for a couple of months, and then when it comes back, it comes back with such a big bang, depending on what is the buzzword during that time. So mm. at the moment, I think the buzzword is, the, is banana banana. And, and which is, I mean, and I know how these scammers are. My little brother, uh, anybody, everybody knows here, is a soccer player. And when we were trying to find him a team, I remember, you know, we, uh, as smart as we are and as, as knowledgeable in the industry as we are, I think we lost 1,000 or 2,000, you know, from, from things like that. So they are very good at what they do and they understand the industry pretty well. What are some of the signs that you think, uh, Brajaz, you know, are you accessible? Can people find you on social media to say, hey, Jazz, is this you? What are some of the things that, oh, I'm not sure who it is that we've lost there. 
Jasmine, are you there? Okay, we've lost Jasmine. We're going to try and get Jasmine back here. Uh, Pro, I mean, once again, thank you so much for, for, for being alert enough to, to realize this uh, uh, for one of those players. But what do we do? What is the awareness that we can do? What are some of the things in and around protecting not just Manana, but this football thing that one should look for, do you think? Uh, this thing is simple, but Andy, everybody knows your voice. Everybody knows about your voice. But the, dif- the difficulty in this situation is that this person knows how to mimic uh, Prachet's uh, voice. He knows how to speak in regular. So were there voice notes? Or yeah, is it just um, talking? Like, was it just texting? Um, I think uh, they've also made phone calls, and uh, he speaks exactly like him. So it becomes difficult for people to to really tell whether or not over the phone. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I they can player, mimic the I, voice of Jasmine, then it, it becomes a bit different. But Propilani, you and I will continue this conversation because I know Jazz has got to spread, spread this word across South Africa using the many stations that we have. But, but Jazz... You know, for those that are listening now, Banyana Banyana, I know a lot of them are listening to this. Soccer players are listening to this. What are some of the signs that you think we should look for? And if people want to double check, is this really jazz? Where do they get a hold of jazz on social media anyway? What, what, what do you advise not, them? Yeah, unfortunately, um, I'm not on social media. But the, the best the best way to, to actually remedy this, which I'm hoping that everybody is listening very attentively. I don't have an 071 or 073 number. My numbers are always two numbers. I can't go to my full number because then, then I'll have yeah. issues than I already have. So, so and, and that is the first thing. The second thing is whatever happens, whether it's an SMS that they say put money into this account or send the money to this phone number, I'm just asking, I, you know, whether that person speaks like me or, or faster or slow, it's not important. What is important, don't pay. It's simple as that. I mean, even if even if that person wanted to help you to move abroad or around or get you a car or a soccer boots, at least there's only one remedy. Because then we can have this conversation with all the listeners every day, every time about whether it's me or not. It's a simple way to do to deal with it. Don't pay that person. Don't. Don't pay you. Don't pay the money to whatever. Whatever they send you an account number or they say put it into this. this don't pay. Don't pay. If you don't pay, then there is no scam. Because the scam is only when the, you've lost money that you've been scammed. So, but, that, but just, is the there only... anything? Because I mean, this is this is now a bigger discussion, of course. But is there any part of having a a, a, a football manager or, or you know a, a football agent where you, as the player, would have to pay? Is there no, anything that you'd I, ever have no, to pay for? No, and and I can say that again. I'm saying to you, if that person is recruit, let's say let's start first with recruitment before we get into sponsorship, because it get it gets a bit muddy there. If anybody, any agent that is recruiting a player to come and join their stable, there's no payment, number one. If, if any agent is asking you to come and join them and they ask you for money, it's a scam. Already, and I'm saying this to parents, I'm saying to, to aspiring young players and aspiring coaches, if that person says they are me, which is not, or any other agent, they call themselves any player, any agent in South Africa, and they're saying, we can help you and, and, and push your career to the limit, and they ask for money, from that point on, just know that it's a scam. Don't do it. Now, let's come to the sponsors. If, if, if someone is, is doing a sponsorship deal for Andy Lenube, I'm doing a sponsorship for you for to get you a, a, card, a card sponsorship, for example. There is no money that is due to me. Because already those people that I'm dealing with in my own stable, that's a value add that I'm, I'm giving to my players. It's not something that I get paid for, but it's a value that I give players because I'm discouraging my players to buy, to buy cars. So because I'm discouraging them to buy cars, I then go out to, to car companies to then sponsor the players that are really doing well, that are, that are deserving of really being sponsored with cars. And, and I speak to my players about this all the time. And that's the reason why you don't have to pay one cent for any of those services. And the lastly is that I do not call anybody and recruit them over the phone for whatever reason. I've got a system that I use, and, and if it's me, we're going to have to meet first. We have to meet first. So there's nobody who's going to pay you. There's no way that I'm going to give you information about what I'm, I'm going to do for you over the phone. So, so anything that has to be any of this that I'm, I'm telling you now is not me. So even if it sounds like Brajaz, even if it's got all the information, if I'm not meeting you face to face, it's not it. Yeah, okay, demand to meet me. At least then demand to meet that person. Because, Andile, how else do you then educate people to say, we can sit here and and argue about who is that person. But if they say these people have cloned my voice, there's a time when I actually went on Metro FM with with Nyandu. Because then 
I, I broadcast my voice note that says, these people apparently they speak like me. They've used, I, I, they say they've used the technology to speak like me. But how do I prove that? The only mm. way to remedy it is don't pay. How else do I say it so that it can be much easier to actually kill the conversation? That's the only way. But, but also, but just, what does this do to you as a personal brand? Now, we've got the South African Football Players Union's uh, vice president who says he knows these people and he knows what they look like. We'll go to him in just a bit because he's calling in. We'll take that. But, but just, what does that do to you personally for your brand? It, I mean, you've worked it, so hard. Yeah, it, it's sad. when I, In fact, it got to a point where when I got the private uh, detectors and investigators to, to follow through this thing, two things that were very discouraging is that if I say to them, guys, why don't you... Make sure that you, 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 you play along, you become that person that they're calling. And then you play like until the point where you meet them somewhere or you, you, you pretend to be something else. And then ultimately then you get, you get a hold of these people. They said, but the law does not allow because they have to apply for something else. Even if they catch them, they get taken to the police. It's unlawful arrest. You know what I mean? Like, so I don't know what else to do. That's the first thing. Then the second thing is if, if those people are, do, they're carrying on doing this thing in my name, and, and at least um, for, for your kind words and for everybody else who knows how I operate is that they will know that I don't have to do I can't do that. Why would I, why would I then ask for that somebody's money and disappear thereafter? You need me now. I'm here. And, and, and because I spoke to that player that, that spoke to Brapro Pilani yesterday after, after speaking to the lady, um, fortunately, the lady that they scammed worked very closely with someone else that I know. So that's how they got to get my number, the real number. And, and unfortunately, everybody else pay first, and then mm. they mm. then get my number. So I'm saying, Angile, simply, you've got my number. You're a broadcaster. So anybody who then at least get to be called for about sponsorship and to be moved from one club to another, can they call you then? And just confirm that you spoke to Chesman at some point. Can you confirm Chesman's number? But just from your yeah. knowledge, how much money are we talking here that is solicited sure. from people? I don't know. I mean, I've had, I've had people that have paid 13,000. Some One of the club... 13,000? Yeah. And, and this is just not... This is just one person. Some of them paid five grand because I get some screenshots where somebody will send me... They paid cash sent. You know, like a cash sent oh, yeah, to, yeah. to banks. So they send cash sent to this number. But as soon as you pay the, that money, then they disappear. And if I can tell you that we opened a case because we've got a bank account, APSA bank account, I've got a bank, after bank account where they scammed Obata Bayire. We went to the police in, in, in Randbeck. We've opened the case. There's a bank account, which means the money went into the account. So what else do I do? The only way I can just tell people is don't pay them. Don't, please don't pay. <laughs> just don't pay. This thing is called a scam because you've paid someone money that is not supposed to be the person that you're thinking he is. That's why you're scammed. Who are we? And, and, and unfortunately, unfortunately for me, uh, I don't even know where to start and how to handle this thing. I can only be grateful to people like yourself and any other broadcasters who bring me on air and say, yes, people are using your name and people like Obra Propila and who will tweet and say, guys, be careful, this is happening. And But I'm saying but for tonight, because I've already done a few interviews on the same issue, I'm mm. hoping and I'm praying that Banyana Banyana players are listening. It doesn't matter how lucrative it sounds. And as long as that person says it's me, it's not me. I'm saying it now. We haven't spoken to any of the players from Banyana Banyana for any other reason. Whether it's sponsorship or signing them. No. Not me. Bridges, thank you so much. Always appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks for your support. That right there is a super football agent, Jasmine Matakane. But we've also got the South African Football Players Union's Vice President Pro, who joins us in this conversation. Tebukho Munyai. Tebukho, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, you've been following the story, I can imagine, but I'm pretty sure, Tebukho, this is not even the first that you're hearing of such. It's just a matter of the goalposts have just shaken and focused now on women's football because of the outpouring um, of love that we all showed them and then the amount of money that we spoke about. Good evening, Andele, and, and good evening to the listeners as well. So, yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is very shocking, uh, to be precise, about this because these stories have been going on and on. Fortunately, um, this person also tried it with me, and I I got to recognize his voice, and I know him. And I met him in person. I confronted him. Um, his name is Mel. Now, um, now, yes, he runs this on a number of zero six six number, or sometimes he uses a different number. Now, who do, you know, do we person, know his surname? This person, his name is Now. Okay. Uh, this person runs a couple of scams under one name. Like he, you will call players, 
he will call coaches. The most names that he's using, he, oh, he uses the name of Jasmine Ramatakwane, he uses the name of uh, Zungu, of uh, uh, the owner and of the Amazon, chairman of yeah. And he also runs a scam of referees, like with club owners. You would call a club owner. This person is very connected. He's someone who works in football. I know him very well. He works in our circuit of football. He works in and football. He's someone who's an administrator in football. This person. Do you know where in football he works? Hello? Debo, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Get it. Do you know where? Which club does he work for? Which institution does he work for? <laughs> I know. He works for one club called Barrera at one stage. While they were in the APC. Oh, yes, I remember Bavero, yeah? Yes, this person worked there. And, 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 and I can tell you, I confronted him in person, face to face. I told him he needs to stop the nonsense that he's doing. And, well, what are the chances, and, and, and are the chances you've got Nero's number? And some of the scandals that he does is that he he's very close with the referees as well. He would say, for instance, I will use the name of Tasso Ongwan, for example. He would call. Uh, as Songwane as a close friend to him and say, hey, where are you working this weekend? He says, no, I'm going to Limpopo. And he checks on the fix, he realizes that, oh, okay, Baroka is playing against uh, so-and-so. Then at home, then he would call the owner of Baroka uh, and say, listen, uh, Songwane is coming to do your game. He has sent me to come and, 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 and negotiate. You and he wants an X amount. Then on the day, the, the poor chairman of Baroka, he sees Songwane on the... Songwane, poor Songwane, knows nothing. But uh, Baroka wins genuinely and he goes later and said, somebody said I must come and collect. He runs it with referees, with players, with club uh, owners, with, uh, as well as uh, the coaches. I, I want to get a hold of Neo, Tabako. Can you assist me to get a hold of Neo? I don't know if this number that I have, he, he will answer it. But I put his number, I sent it as Neo Bokas Man. Bokas Man. So, I'll tell you what, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep you on the line. Or still gonna I'm going gonna... to keep you on the line. I'm going to put you back to Timmy. Uh, Timmy will take it so that uh, we can give Timmy the number and see what how far we can get with this and see if we can get to the bottom of this. If we're lucky enough, um, we can perhaps get that. So uh, let's take a quick break in the meantime. Breaking news. Uh, Pro Pilani is setting um, the alarm on a scam that is currently ongoing, focused and targeting Banyana Banyana. We've got, uh, who do we have? Uh, I see, I see. Oh, Jerry Skosana. Thanks to the help of uh, Beverly Mapangwa, who sent um, uh, a message to, 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 to Timmy. Jerry's going to come on as well, because Jerry apparently has very much, like Debo Munyai, come face to face with the scammer. Debo Do we still have Debo on the line? Debo Yes, I'm still I, I just on the line. Get, I just want to get a little bit more on this. So we don't know Neo's surname. We know his name is Neo. We know he works within the football fraternity. What, what else do we know about him? I mean, if I'm trying to get a hold of Neo, if we're trying to talk to Neo, who is he hired by at the moment? I don't know right now. But wherever there's a football um, event, like your, your ABC playoffs, your, every game, this man is there. He's everywhere. He's, the, he's part of football. He's, uh, the last time I saw him, I saw him at the ABC Musepe playoffs. And uh, this man... Uh, he he's very smooth and very very friendly with people. He's got contact with people. He knows almost everyone in football. So so it's very it's very it's very scary. But we don't know his surname. Say, Hello. You don't know his surname. I don't know his surname. I just know him as Neil. But I know when I see him face to face. I know him. I really appreciate you coming on, of course, and uh, bringing this to light to people. We're gonna try all we can to get him on here to come and talk to us um, uh, yeah, and now to see what it is that uh, he can offer in defense. Um, oh, somebody has sent us a text. There you go. Uh, I appreciate our listeners so much and those that listen to the show because his surname has come out now. Now Makaine, M-A-K-A-E-N-E. If you know anything about Nao uh let's get on the line. Let's, let's try and speak to Nao. Pro, do you know Nao? No? Pro, you there? I had never heard of Nell for Dundee. Never heard of Nell. Never heard of Nell. All right. Well, that's the story. But Pro, thank you so much. Really do appreciate everything that you've done to to, to bring this to light. Thank you so much for Dundee. Uh, keep doing well. Thank you. Appreciate it there. That is uh, Pro Pilani. He broke the story. Go to his uh, Twitter feed, at Pro Pilani, to get the latest on this one. I think we're not going to end it here. Nell Makaini. If you know who Nao is, 
chances are Nell listens to this very show because if you're going to be listening to sports, if you're going to be listening to say, you know, what he is obviously passionate about football, there is no other place. So now I know you're listening. Give us a call. 086-000-2160. Just want to have a chat. Just want to have a chat. Take a break. Exactly, 1841. Uh, thank you so much to a lot of the people in the, in the, in the football um, fraternity. You know, we've gotten the surname. We've got a photo of Neo as well. I'm looking at Neo in front of me now. What kit is this, Timmy? Mangaung United. Mangaung United, yeah? yeah United. United. He's wearing Mangaung United kit here. Uh, an elderly gentleman with a goatee. Uh, but but baby tang, uh, spice, baby tang goatee, uh, black and white. And a little white. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. He's wearing glasses like me. Uh, very colorful glasses there. With a tattoo on his, um, on his arm. Uh, on both his arms, in fact. He's got tattoos on both his arms. I've got the picture here with me. Now, we'd love to talk to you. We'd love to have a conversation with him and, uh, you know, see what it is. Uh, Timmy, send this to me so that I, I can populate it as well. Let's try find. Let's try find now. It's a conversation we're supposed to have in the first place. You know, we try uh, diversify on a Tuesday. Bruce Davidson, a uh, tennis journalist, now joins us. Novak Djokovic. Saying the toughest I've ever played. I felt insulted hearing that, David. Uh, I was like, what, Bruce? Hi, Adil. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I don't know whether to, to be impressed by Alcaraz or to feel offended by Djokovic. He says, this is the best I've ever played. Yeah, no, I tell you something. Alcaraz is, 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 is a big, big, big uh, player. He's got a big game and... Uh, He's the most dangerous player on the circuit at the moment. And I think for Novak Djokovic to have won in Cincinnati, uh, a great win for him returning to the USA after all his vax uh, issues where he was banned from being in the USA. I mean, Djokovic played out of his skull to to win that match. I watched that match with interest and uh, he came back from, uh, you know, a set down. Um, He came back from a breakdown. He came back from match point down, set point down to win. I mean, Djokovic, if I go to war, he, ta- he, he goes right in the front line. He's the most amazing uh, fighter and player. Not my favorite, but I have to give credit to him. I mean, to beat Alcaraz the way he did was absolutely incredible. And it sets a very, very strong warning to all the players for uh, New York next week uh, for the U.S. Open. He, he's definitely on a mission. Um, he likes to break records. He likes to be at number one. He's only got to win one match in New York to take the number one spot away from Alcaraz. Um, and yeah, I, I think there's lots more coming from Djokovic. He's going to set all sorts of records. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. But fit man, dedicated man, absolute soldier. And uh, he just performed remarkably on, 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 on the weekend. The one thing that we keep hearing about is... Uh the chameleon nature of Alcaraz in terms of, you know, the different surfaces and how he's mastering the different surfaces. And at his age, one wonders, you know, if he's going to be, as, as, as Djokovic has described him before, at Wimbledon in particular, the best of the three goats, so to speak, that have been in tennis for the last 10 years or so. I think he's got a very good chance. And the one thing about Alcaraz is, is as you said in, in, in that short intro, is that he's able to play very smartly on all the surfaces. You must remember that um, in Spain, they're brought up on clay. So like Rafael Nadal, there's a, a very strong domination on the clay courts by the Spaniards. But um, like Nadal, his coaches taught him to play on hard court and grass court. So that's why uh, Nadal was able to win the Grand Slam. He was able to win at Wimbledon, was able to win on the hard courts of the US as well as uh, Australia. And they, um, you know, have set the tone for Alcaraz. And I do believe that Alcaraz has got a bigger game than Nadal. Um, whether he's got that fighting temperament that Nadal's famous for, we'll have to see. He's still young. He's only 19 years old. There's just, or 20 years old. There's just so much more to come from this kid. And he's in very, very good hands. You must always look at the team that surrounds him. Um, he's got some incredible coaching um, by former world number one, Carlos, Jean Carlos Ferreira. He's got uh, a very, very smart uh, uh, mentor in Rafael Nadal. So I do not think that uh, uh, we can take this lightly. I think that there is very strong indication that he could be a very dominant um, player going forward and break all sorts of records. 
Wow. And then uh, let's move on a little bit to, to, to the women's game. Coco Golf. I mean, here's a name that has been up and coming for so long. It's such a, a promising hope for so long. And, you know, yes, she's a young girl and yes, she's still going to get there. But at some point when I was looking out for her and I was actually following her, I felt like she kind of took a slump and now we see her rising again. Yeah, I think Coco Golf has is, 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 is really impressed. I mean, we, we are seeing a, 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 a sudden surge in her game. I think there's been a lot of pressure on her to come and replace the Serena Venus element of the game. Um, you know, her mother put under a lot of pressure as well because, uh, you know, they expected lots from her. She's 19 years old. Um, um, and, and, and winning her first uh, WTA 1000, which is similar to the men's ATP 1000, it's the highest level of tournament under the Grand Slams, um, is just opening the door for, for her great success. I mean, uh, she she um, she's just hit it in time for the U.S. Open. Her form is just on on song, and I think that big win over Iga Swiatek in the semi-finals, her first win over the world number one in seven uh, matches that they've played, um, set a very very good platform for her to go into the finals. She was playing against a, a really tough player, Karolina Machova. Remember, she reached the final of the French Open, and uh, she's now in the top ten after that uh, final berth. But uh, it was a very, very solid one. We have seen Coco uh, choke when she goes into the big matches mm. before, um, but she definitely, definitely pulled it through, and I think this is going to give her some added confidence. Also, another big warning for, for all the players in New York. I'm looking forward to New York. What are some of the things that we can look forward to in New York? I mean, obviously, there's this new big battle now um, in, in men's tennis. There's this big battle that we're all waiting for. We're all wanting to see who's going to come out tops of it. Is it going to be um, the experienced or is it going to be the new young talent? But what else? What are some of the other uh, things we've got to look out for come New York? Well, I think the rivalry between Carlos Alcaraz and Novak Djokovic is definitely going to be um, the one to look for in the men's singles. We must remember, as I said earlier, Novak Djokovic only has to win one match at Flushing Meadows to go to world number one. So the pressure of trying to keep the world number one spot um, by Carlos is, is off his shoulders. That's going to take a lot of lot, uh, a lot away from Carlos, and it's going to give him an added advantage. He's won in New York before. We know that he knows how to win on the big stage. Novak Djokovic is definitely trying to race ahead with the Grand Slam tally so that Nadal, when he comes back from injury, isn't able to catch him up. Um, so, so that's the big one. Medvedev, who's always very, very uh, tough on the on the hard courts, hasn't found his form yet, but he could find the groove in New York. We know that he's capable of upsetting every single player, and there's a host of other players from Tsitsipas right down to um, Yannick Sinner, Kasparut, uh, Hogarun. You know, it's just a talent of them, and of course, not forgetting the Americans that love to play on the big stage in New York, uh, Taylor Fritz and and and, and Tafu. Um, the men's singles is is, is going to be a, a really humdinger, but the women's singles I think is wide open. Swiatek definitely will go in as, as the favourite, but you know, looking at Coco Golf and playing in America in front of the Americans, she's going to be a dangerous lurker. Savalenka wants to win a second Grand Slam title. I mean, and she she she's she's good on the hard court. Then the American uh, Pagula, Jessica Pagula, is up to number three in the world ranking, so she's going to be a dangerous floater. And then we've got our own African one, that Ons Chabur, who's trying to prove to everybody that she can win uh, a Grand Slam. She's certainly not going to disappoint in New York. It's going to be a very interesting last year. The fittest are going to survive. Remember, last Grand Slam of the year, I mean, the fittest are going to survive. It's been a tough, long year for most of the players. And um, and we're going to see um, who's going to reign supreme um, after two weeks of really scintillating tennis. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it too. And I'm also looking forward to our conversation after that, Bruce. Thank you so much for coming on as usual. It's always a pleasure. Keep your eye on the ball. Thank you so much, man. It's uh, 1849. He's always a coach. Huh? Keep your eye on the ball. That's how he signs off. you got to love it. you got to love it. We're going to take some of your calls and, uh, you know, perhaps uh, we're getting so many photos and uh, different things on who now is. It's an ongoing scam that's been going for a very long time. Um, I remember Kumbulani, also at Bloomington Celtic, at some point, Ukongo, at some point, Yangu uh, Kongo, uh, when he called me, uh, wanting my brother to come uh, and trial in Bloemfontein. You know, luckily I had Kumbulani's number, so I could call Kumbulani and say, hey, gentlemen, I hear you're looking for my brother. And Kumbulani said, hey, I have no idea what you're talking about, Mubi. Uh, but what it did do is it, it then made Kumbulani get my brother out to Bloemfontein. But obviously doing it not through uh, this character. So I too at some point 
um, was nearly a victim of Nell. Yeah, Timmy is going to go and uh, sort out your calls. And Timmy, you must come answer as to why it is that other people get through and others don't. You must still answer. Let's go to your voice notes. What's at the Metro FM studio? 060-552-7303. Andile, good evening there. And good evening to all Metro FM listeners worldwide. Now, you know, I think um, the player's salaries should not be disclosed, especially in South Africa, because we are living in a very high crime zone. This place is not a place whereby players' salaries should be disclosed. It's a very dangerous country, this one. But uh, hopefully, just man, your name be cleared. And uh, I don't know what to say again. Hi, Andile. It's Temba from Dobsonville here. I just want to find out one thing. When someone can be able to give you their account number, surely that person can be traced who is the person himself. So if you can't get the people, especially with their ID numbers and everything, then this country is rotten to death. Sorry about that. Andile, good evening, my guy, Rolana from Mamelodi. Andile, it's like me now, looking for a job via emails. Someone send, sends me an email saying that I should forward the thousand rand so that they can set up an interview for me. Already it's written scam. Already I should panic. So for the lady, for the soccer player, she was supposed to panic at first. How can someone say um, forward uh, uh, 500,000 or whatever the amount is for me to get you sponsors? Even if it was just men Mashakwan, first get me those sponsors, then we'll settle the amount uh, later after that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's easier said now, um, but it, it, it's a little bit more complicated and complex like that uh, when you're in the heat in the moment of things. But yes, we should all essentially be a lot more wary. Let's go to Kolis. Kolis was out here in Johannesburg, wants to speak about the scam. Kolis. Good evening, Ma. How are you, sir? Hey, no, I'm good, man. I'm very well. Um, you know, Ma, I just want to look at it from a little bit different angle. Mm. I always assume that players playing professional have got their uh, representative. And now, I want now to assume that this uh, uh, Bayana player had no one who was representing her. Now, the minute someone asks for money, mm. I think that should be alarm clocking in your mind that no man. How can this person ask for money before he, he offers the service? Yeah, but Kodiswa, look at it this way. If Andy Lengube calls you, and you can hear it's Andy Lengube's voice, and I say to you, I've got something big, you know, we're opening a new radio station, we're leaving this metro thing, uh, but listen, uh, you're going to be the one running this one. I'm putting you there as CEO. But listen, man, we need 50000 to get it off started. You know, and it's me in my voice. As they say, that he's he, he's in a, he's around the circle so much that he knows the people there. He can use their voices. He mimics them or uses AI or whatever it is for the voices. Do you understand that? Uh, it's easy to say for you and I, and I get it. You know, we, we could be maybe wiser when it comes to that. But for other people... I, I, I listened very carefully to, to, to Jayman when she, she, he was on, on. He said, at least ask this person to meet face to face. 100%. And that way, at, at least we are on, on, on safer side. It, it, it's really heartbroken to see this happen. It really is. I mean, they worked so hard, fought for that money just to give away like that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, let's go to Peter. Peter's out in Brits. Peter. Hey. How are you doing? No, I'm no, always my- good, man. Yeah, the thing of the scam is, is a problem in, uh, in our country. But even if we cannot maybe disclose on how much uh, players get in what, 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 but when they want to scam you, they'll scam you. Hmm. Remember, no, now I can say maybe to you, but I know of a lot of guy because hmm. of the media who powerful. Why read people who are kicking the whole one thing for? When do you get this? Because you, you guys, generally, media has got a powerful influence in our country for, when coming to sports, actually. You know, you, you, you just said, you must see my crew around the street. No, 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 you know what, what, what I'm saying. So you and think, because uh, I mean, yeah. I've, I've heard people asking to know what players are earning because we think 
that if we know how much players are earning, it'll help the players that don't earn a lot of money as sort of like a, a barrier for minimum wage. So you think that's a bad idea? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Peter Houghton, Peter. Even, yeah. Even if I'm, you know, Very quickly, go for it. Yeah, maybe even if I'm waiting somewhere, but someone can tell me that I know that we are getting so much. Mm. And even if it's not in the football, even in, in a... Maybe I'm working, co, 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 kai, kai. But if someone can tell me, no, I know that you are, you are in so much, you know. I hear you. Peter, out in Paris. Thank you so much. Let's go to Spongeleni. Oh, so much of any. Oh, for coming a scam, gang a foot in the Bafana Bafana, a spelling gay auto manuna, Spongeleni, Scatsa San Billy, but Ninga before now. What do you want to talk about? Oh, all right. Gizo, Tandu Kulumangelo, Giba Fana Bafana, our Jania Pale. No, I'm good, man. I see here. It's quite as cool as saying a zero, a singer, and moon, you are Saskatchew. Yes, but I was very happy to see some players like Abo. Home to Nyelo, Chico United. I've been following him for the past couple of games. Now, even last season, I was looking at him, seeing that he deserved to play for a big team or getting a call up to Ibafana Bafan. And then Umlungi Simbunja, who's been fantastic since the start of the season. So I think it's a good squad overall. Let's hope that Bazo was with Ibafana Bafana in the game. And then lastly, my uh, who knows if you are changing the to each other, be sure you are going to say the who is Porsche or Gamma team. What are you called? Porsche team. Thank you so much uh, to you and Portia. Speaking, of course, about Mlungisi Mbunjane of TS Galaxy, uh, the midfielder there called up to the squad as well as Uzugo um, Dunyelo with Chipa United, the defender also called up. West is out in Timbisa. West, you one of those people uh, that are sending complaints. We're now at Zena all the time. Biang. I ah, know I get to the end of the Mr. President. Right? <laughs> Can you put a minute, Mr. President? Don't catch her all the time these days. I, I guess Ask it's a easy, complaint man. that we get. Ask you, no, talk to okay. me very quickly. Go for it. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a very sto- uh, a sad story, uh, Sir Jasmine. And I know Jasmine, I mean, he's one of the guys that actually tried to help me to make it professional. And it's a very sad story. But it's a, I, I mean, we're living in a very desperate uh, uh, world, especially in our country, it can either be employment or anything, but we just need to be vigilant, all of us. And, and yeah, meet a person, uh, uh, meet whoever that is, face to face, that is trying to help you. And in, in person, I mean, if I mean, somebody like Jasmine wouldn't say give me 100 grand to, to, make, to make you uh, make it professional. I appreciate it, so, best from all of us here. Hey, Timmy. Ole para, pela pela, ganzo mi.